So what's going on everyone? I wanted to take a quick moment and make a video on my truck. This is kind of a follow-up video to the video I made about the fifth wheel and the things we liked and the things we didn't like. So I've had this truck now for going on about three months, and I wanted to point out some of the things that I like about the truck and some of the things that I don't really care for. Starting on the interior of the truck, one thing that I don't like about the 450 is that it lacks TPMS or tire pressure monitoring for the tires. So I had to go buy this little cheapy one that plugs into a cigarette lighter, and it only gives me the tire pressure on four of my tires. So. I don't get to have it on all six of the tires of the truck. The way I have it set up right now is I have it on the two front tires and the two outer rear tires, but I can simply transition them to the inner rear tires if I'd like, if I wanna see what the pressure and the temperature are there. This system actually works really well and it's one of the few systems that goes all the way up to 110 PSI. Most of these systems stop at about 80 PSI and are really designed for lighter duty trucks or cars. Another thing that I really don't care for about this truck is one that bothers the heck out of me. There is a way to overcome it by reprogramming the computer of the truck, but you know, they should have just put an on off button. And that is when you open the door with the engine running, which I'll do, and then you close the door, watch what happens. The horn wants to honk. And the horn on this truck is a very, very loud horn. So when it honks, if you're in a neighborhood, if you are in a parking lot, a hotel, wherever it does that, a gas station, it's gonna honk at you twice like that every time you close the door. And I just find that to be an absurdly easy feature to simply turn off with a switch, which unfortunately Ford did not include. Something else that just bugs the heck out of me is the way their door handle is designed in conjunction to the key fob. So this truck has the keyless entry where you can just simply touch the inside of the door handle to unlock it. The problem is the way you touch or the way you would pull the handle to open the door in most vehicles, you can't really do here. You have to reach in and slowly touch the inside. Otherwise, you'll try to open it before it's had a chance to unlock. Let me give you an example right there. I can't unlock the truck, yet the lights on the mirrors are flashing, wanting me to believe I can. What I have to do is I have to reach in slowly, touch the inside, and then open up the truck. And that's just something that, again, is kind of annoying. I wish that they would have made the system work a little bit quicker and a little better because if you look at other vehicles like Lexus, Infiniti, Nissan, these companies that have been doing this for a long time, it's a much, much quicker process to open up the door without having to worry about making sure you press it slowly so the door has time to unlock. If you get the truck without the automatic tailgate release and you go for like an XL or an XLT, then you have a handle still. On my truck, I no longer have a handle. So Ford eliminated that. They put a button here with an actuator inside, which is used to release the tailgate. I don't like that because I think that that creates the possibility that if you have a dead battery or if you have problems, you might not be able to get into the bed of your truck. So I wish that they would have left at least a mechanical handle there for a backup situation in case the truck battery goes dead. One other thing I don't like is the mirrors on this truck are still the automatic style mirror where you can fold them in or fold them out with a button inside of the truck. But once you turn off the key and open the door, you no longer have the ability to power fold the mirrors in. You have to then hit the button again, power fold them in, then turn the truck back off again. Now, that's not a big deal most of the time because you know, I just hit the button before I get out, but if I have passengers in the vehicle and anybody opens their door first, it prevents me from power folding the mirrors in. Then I have to turn the key back on to fold it back in, which I really don't care for. Now, another thing that's interesting is just the sheer amount of stuff that's cluttered under the front of this truck. Before, with my 2016 model, I had all sorts of room under there to mount things or to put things I might need to put under there. Now, there's very, very little room. Even with this big ranch hand bumper sticking off the front, there's still very little room back there to put any equipment that you might need to mount back there. Now, something I really liked about my 2016 and 2011 Super Duty were the fact that I had all sorts of 12 volt outlets. I had one underneath into the rear of the back seat. I had, I believe, four of them up front, and I had one behind the center console for passengers in the back. 
now they've eliminated most of those. So before where I had about six 12 volt outlets, I have a total of three 12 volt outlets on this truck as opposed to six. Those outlets come in really handy for chargers, dash cams, all sorts of different things that you might need to bring with you. Now they've replaced them with USB outlets. So even though you have the ability to charge a USB device, if you don't use the specific ones in the back for charging, the front ones, every time you connect a device to it, your navigation or your infotainment system wants to find it as an add-on device like a cell phone or something. Just not the way I prefer it. I'd like more 12 volt outlets. I'd definitely like the one under the back seat. And I'd even like one under the dash or in an area where if I want to connect something like a dash cam, I don't have to worry about having to have it hardwired in. I can simply run the standard 12 volt socket that comes with it under the dash, plug it in, tuck the wire away and I'm in good shape. Unfortunately, not an option on this truck. Now I absolutely love the fact that Ford switched to 100% LED lights on this truck. So turn signals, brake lights, headlights, parking lights, running lights, everything is an LED light. But what I don't like is that Ford did not use adaptive turning and adaptive headlight technology to where the headlight automatically adjusts up or down depending on the weight in the back of the truck. Lexus, Infiniti, several other vehicles have been doing this for some time to where if you have a heavy weight in the vehicle, the headlight will automatically adjust downward so the beam isn't pointing directly into oncoming traffic. But on this truck, if I have my fifth wheel in the back, I'm getting flashed by people coming towards me because the headlight doesn't automatically adjust downwards to prevent from glaring into their eyes. On a big truck like this, you would absolutely hope or want that feature simply because the likelihood of towing something heavy is always going to exist and you would just figure they would want to keep from blinding oncoming traffic when the headlights are pointed up higher. Another thing is the way that the safety chain mount was designed here, these holes to attach your trailer safety chains to. This is actually a very, very bad design because you can't typically get your chains to fit over these holes. I've heard this complaint from a lot of new Super Duty owners and they really should have made a little bit thinner material here so you can actually fit the chain around it. But unfortunately, because this area is so thick, it's very difficult to get a safety chain to hook over these hoops. And unfortunately, unless you get some type of aftermarket or add-on adapter, you really can't use your safety chains with these factory hoops unless they're just incredibly large safety chains. Another thing that I really wish they could have done is added some simple and quick buttons that you could turn the rear parking sensors on and off with as opposed to making it a menu that you have to go through to get to. So for the most part, if I'm going to put the truck in reverse, the camera's going to turn on there and you'll see where I can put my rear parking aids on or off. Now the problem isn't so much knowing that you're about to go in reverse and doing this. The problem is, is oftentimes if you are hitching up a trailer like a fifth wheel or something like that, when the tailgate is down, it's gonna make the parking sensors go crazy. So then you have to go through your menu when you're about to back up and turn the feature on or off. What I would prefer is what Ram does as well as GM does is simply put a button somewhere up front here that allows you to simply and quickly turn off your parking sensors when you're not using them. Shoot, maybe even add an extra button to the top. Because if you wanna turn them off when the truck's not in reverse, you have to go into your menu, you have to go all the way over to your settings and you have to turn off rear parking aid. And then it resets itself to the on position every time you get back in the vehicle and start the truck back up. And then finally, this ridiculously large key fob. This key fob is huge. It reminds me of a pager back in the day. And because this thing's so large, when it's in your pocket, you have a high likelihood that you're gonna bump some of these buttons, which I've actually done. I didn't realize at one point that I had accidentally bumped, apparently, the tailgate release button a couple times, and then I came out later that day to find my tailgate was down. So. The fob is just too large. They should have recessed these buttons. The only reason I have this leather case over it is because it recesses the buttons a little bit and it's less likely that a button's accidentally gonna get pushed. But they should have gone to a little bit more compact style key fob or at least recessed the buttons in and you know helped eliminate the chance that you could accidentally press these buttons while they're in your pocket. Guys, for the most part, I absolutely love this truck. This is the best truck I've ever owned. I absolutely love the turning radius of having a 450. I love the 19 and a half inch Alcoa wheels. I love the tires even on this truck. I didn't like them on my 2016 because I didn't feel that I'd get the traction when I'd need them, but I really haven't had any problems and I really like the peace of mind of having that commercial grade tire on this truck. Also, love the color, love the engine, the horsepower, the torque, everything about this truck I really like, including the LED package, 
luggage. The seats are, what I would say, relatively comfortable. After sitting in a couple Rams and a couple GM trucks, I'd say it's not quite as comfortable as some of those trucks, but they give you a nice massage feature, which comes in handy occasionally. What I will say is that you have a tremendous amount of rear leg room in this truck, and that comes in handy. And I think it's only maybe an inch or an inch and a half less than even a Ram Mega Cab. So even though you get more in a Mega Cab, it's not much more. And I actually think the Mega Cab is a little bit too long for most truck buyers' needs. Anyways, the things that I like in this truck absolutely make up for the few things that I don't care for. There are so many reasons to like new and modern luxury pickup trucks. They give you all the amenities of a luxury car, but at the same time, you get it in a very, very useful pickup truck format that lets you haul trailers, carry lumber, do the type of work you might need to do in a pickup truck, but the same luxury amenities that you expect in a luxury car. So far, this truck has had absolutely no problems whatsoever. I haven't had any issues, no squeaks, no rattles coming from the sunroof like I did on the 2017 F350 Dually that I had for about a month. Um, one regret that I do have is that I didn't go ahead and just opt for the 450 first because I did lose some money when I traded in that 350 dually um, and it wasn't enough to prevent me from doing it but it was enough to give me a little bit of heartburn at the end of the day and just wished I had opted for a 450 right out the gate. But the simple fact is I plan on keeping this truck for a long time. I have no intention of getting rid of it or trading it in for anything else. This truck has been great to me so far and I look forward to hauling the RV all over with it. Anyways, guys, if you hadn't had a chance, please subscribe to my channel. I have a lot of great videos coming up on all sorts of different topics. If you haven't followed my channel before, the way I usually do it is I divide my topics up between general rant videos, talking about towing, payload capacities, different types of safety aspects of towing. Then I talk about RVs. I talk about trucks. I do my truck reviews, my RV reviews, accessory reviews. I really have about five or six different types of videos that I shoot. When you see my dash cam style video, if you don't like that, honestly just wait till the next video it'll probably be a whole different type of technique that i use to film that one anyways guys please take a moment subscribe to my channel i really appreciate you guys following me and i look forward to talking to you again soon have a wonderful day